When an inventor is stuck in his own invention, here's a look at the NECA toys, Eastman and Laird's Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Fugitoid. This fugitive android was once the brilliant Professor Honeycutt from the planet Dehunib, until his mind was trapped inside his android creation in a freak accident. Now on the run from the government of his home world, this hero in a full shell of metal has become the best ally a turtle could ever have. This fugitive action figure stands approximately 5.5 inches tall and includes interchangeable hands, assorted weapons that can also be used for your NECA turtle figures, and more. Comes in a special comic book tribute window box packaging. Maybe the first thing we'll do before we actually have a closer look at Fugitoid. First of all, I'd like to thank the folks over at NECA Toys that did provide, in fact, a sample that we could have a look at in this review. Following up to that, let's go ahead and grab now the tape measure just to see how tall the figure stands. Fugitoid stands five inches exactly. And flipping that around, the figure stands about 13 centimeters tall. Based on the fact that the source material here for Fugitoid is from the original Mirage comic run, figure for best comparisons, we would actually bring in the Mirage Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, also from NECA Toys. There's what he looks like next to Michelangelo. There's what he looks like next to Leonardo. Here's what he looks like next to Raphael. And a figure that we will be bringing in later on when we have a look at some of his accessories, because one of them is specific to Donatello. Here's what he looks like next to Donatello. Never really get the chance to bring these figures out. But yeah, I love the fact that we are getting more Mirage tied in characters. Fugitoid does look great if you already have these figures in your collection. If you are familiar with the original Mirage Ninja Turtle comics, then many of the accessories that we are going to be looking at that come included with Fugitoid are ones that may ring a bell to you. Like, for example, the figure comes included with a pair of pistols. Not necessarily pair as if they are identical, they are slightly varied from one to the other. You can see the more so in the barrel than anything else. They are a little bit different. The handles are more closer in proximity. But I do like the really dark panel lining that they used for these. It really looks like the original source material. In fact, you probably could even flip through some of the pages of those earlier Mirage comics. And in fact, be able to pinpoint the very same blasters we're looking at right now in plastic. By the way, any one of the weapons that we are looking at, as well as the rest of the accessories, can fit not only in Fugitoid's hand, but to also bring back in Donatello here for a second. Just to show you here, we're going to take the bow staff out of his hand. I love these original Mirage turtle figures. And uh, you can actually just take any one of the weapons. I'm just going to take this for the time being. There we go. And you can see it fits somewhat perfectly into Donatello's hand. I had to fight that a little bit, but it does fit perfectly into his hands. That will also continue on in a second. The figure also comes included with a slightly larger, likely more destructive blaster. Again, the nice use of both the blues and the blacks really does make this look like the original Mirage comics. One thing that's really good about Fugitoid is he really serves as being like an accessory pack for all those older Mirage Turtle figures, if you still have those in your collection. The figure also comes included with a Triceraton blaster. Somewhat of a telltale giveaway is the fact that there's, it's triangular, but I do like the detailing that they've done to this. Primarily more a medium gray, but again, you've got that nice dark black lining there. A few little scratches and stuff like that that you would expect to see drawn on page. Very, very cool. The figure also comes included with a Triceraton restraining cuffs. Sort of looks like more like a nut or a washer instead. I guess more like a nut. Uh, this does fit actually with both uh, try, uh, both with Fugitoid and also a turtle. First, though, if you want to do it with Fugitoid, you will have to remove his hands. They simply just plug into those sockets. We'll do it on both the sides. The downside, though, to Fugitoid is the fact that his arms are a wire frame. So if you are, for example, trying to get the restraining cuff onto him, you have to bend first the elbow. It isn't even so much an elbow. It's just a continuous wire. But once you remove the hands, you just take the cups now, of course, what's left of his forearms, and they're supposed to just plug into one side and do then the exact same thing on the other side. The problem I have with this, though, as I try to do this on both the sides, it took me actually several times to do this. When you finally get them both in place, usually one will one will get in and then the other one will just pop back out. But there's a wire right here, right at the very end. This is just what's left of the wire that started at the top of his forearm. But as it goes all the way around, the more you bend this, at least on mine, the more I'm noticing that wire is starting to stick out. 
Uh, it does technically allow Fugitoid to plug into the restraining cuff, but it comes almost at the expense of having that wire sticking out. And I would probably say if you do succeed in getting this into us, like I did do at the beginning of this video, so I wasn't just fibbing you guys, but if you do manage to get his hands in both the ends of the restraining cuff, I probably wouldn't do it long term just for that risk of the wire continuing to probably pull its way out of the plastic molding. What you can also do too is take yourself a turtle. This is again the original Donatello. I'm going to be probably sticking a lot with Donatello for this. We're going to go ahead and remove his hands. We'll do the exact same thing. Yes, yes, on the other side. I want to handle this with a little bit more care. Not that I don't normally handle these things with care, but again, just bend the elbows. It's actually a little bit easier on the turtles simply just because, well, you don't have to bend the wire. And while it doesn't necessarily plug in place, sorry, let's spin this around. There we go. While it doesn't necessarily plug in place, it gets the job done. And it does look at rather effectively. I think actually in the comics, when they did have the Triceraton cuffs on, they were actually on the back. So like their arms would have gone behind their shells, not at the front. Just due to the limitations, though, the articulation points in the elbows, the elbows, elbows, and the shoulders. And you really can't rotate the arm the other way around. And a character like this, a figure like this of this age... I don't know if I would really jeopardize bringing the arms around to attach them to the back. I just don't think there's enough reach. But you can de definitely do that from the front. Moving that and putting that to the side, the one other thing that the Fugitoid comes included with, above and beyond some extra hands also as well. He's got different gestured hands for whatever purpose you decide to display him with. Uh, some of the hands are actually a little bit more... I, fanned out, I guess would be a best word to describe that. And of course, he's got some gripping hands really suited for then holding any one of the accessories that the figure comes included with. Again, you just wedge it in between the figures, fingers of the figure, and he holds it just fine. The last thing, and I love the fact that they included this, not necessarily something that you would display, I would say, with Fugitoid, but most definitely something you could display with Donatello. Pulled from the pages, I think of that Donatello one-shot, this is the Donatello Gravity Equalizer. And actually, what you can do while we're on the topic of Donatello, taking that original Mirage figure, it does fit somewhat onto his arm. When you are putting it onto his arm, though, you do feel a lot of friction along the ways, but they did design it in such a way that you can take your Donatello, removing first the hand, I find it's the easiest, but does fit over his hand. So if you'd like to display your old Donatello with the Gravity Equalizer, yes. Yes, you can actually do that. And of course, you can also do that also. Let's go ahead and just remove this carefully from Donatello's forearm. You can also do that as well with Fugitoid. Fugitoid works the same way. You're just sliding it up and then go ahead and take a suitable hand for this and just plug that into the top. Although with Fugitoid, it would be probably best recommended to straighten his arm a little bit more just so you can get, like his form is really tight. You'll notice that there really is tight quarters here when you're trying to take the cup what's left now of its forearm and try to finagle it through the gravity equalizer but technically it does fit over the arm of fugitoid also as well moving all those accessories out of the way getting now a closer look though at fugitoid i gotta say as being a fan of the original mirage run of ninja turtle comics i love the look here of fugitoid first of all one thing i do like actually just stop myself here for a second Sorry, I couldn't look at him just not having a hand on the other side. One thing I do really like is the way they colored Fugitoid here. It looks, first of all, like the comics, but I do like the shine and sheen that they've added to the front of his metal. And that's everywhere, too. It's not necessarily to say that you have to have this displayed with your Mirage comic turtles. In fact, if you don't have those, easily just display Fugitoid. Always a little bit differently looking. I mean, you could easily display this also with your cartoon turtles as well. Head sculpt, though, is really nice and classic, faithful to the original source material. Part of me does wish, though, that they could have had swappable eyes because his eyes do change a little bit in the comics. Maybe this could have been something that they could have detached, unplugged it. Maybe not necessarily with the sound effect, but you could pop the eyes off and just replace them out. Put those back in place with something different in the in the eye department. But other than that, I'm really, really happy with how the head sculpt turned out. And uh, surprised, actually, is as well to find, even though we're kind of moving now into the territory of articulation. Really, really was surprised with how articulated this guy actually is. But to spin this around from all the sides so you can see what's going on here, he's got some really interesting panel lining, uh, both the darker shadowing as well as the highlights of light that are bouncing, of course, on the metal of his body. 
overall, I'm really, really happy with how this figure turned out. He, they even went the mile of actually sculpting the undertreads of his feet. Something that most collectors, I know myself, how often are you going to be picking a figure up and inspecting his undersoles? But they at least did sculpt the underside of that. I really, really like how this guy turned out. As for the articulation, though, on Fugitoid, we're going to start things off first with his head sculpt. It is on a ball joint, so while you can move his head back and forth this way, you can also have it looking down and looking up. It, I don't think it's a case where there's a secondary ball joint, at least not that I'm able to move. It seems only any bit of the posability that gets going for this figure is actually only more up here and not so much down below in the neck. If that is the case where you can rotate it, I think it's, if anything, just a more swivel joint than actual ball joint, because there really isn't a lot of clearance on the inside cavity of his neck. Now, his shoulders do rotate. That was one thing that did surprise me. I just assumed, if anything, there was going to be a wire frame, if anything, just in the arms, and nothing in the shoulders, but not the case at all. You can take the shoulders and rotate them, in fact, all the way around. And as we already looked at, the figure does have a wire frame that starts here and ends here, or starts here, ends here. And again, that allows the elbow to bend. What I wouldn't do, though, is bend it here. If anything, kind of figure where you want to bend it and put your finger against that point. So when you're bending it, you're not putting pressure against this point or this point, possibly ripping from either side. And again, like you can see, like there's the holes right there on the undersides of his arms. Again, I have the issue with the one wire sticking out. So I'm going to be very careful to that. And maybe I might just be able to take myself like a screwdriver and see if I can tuck that back into the plastic. Just be careful. Like I said, I, as, light, as much as I like the fact that they included the Triceraton shackles, I don't know if I would put the restraining cuffs, cuffs on Fugitoid all the time. Just for always having his elbows bent and the wire frame bent, I feel like, again, that wire may continue to seep out the plastic molding. As for the upper torso, it is on a ball joint, a very generous, generous ball joint. There doesn't seem to be any waist swivel lower down here. The legs swivel or hinge forward and back the exact same way as the shoulders we looked at earlier. And again, you've got the wire frame running from here to here. There doesn't seem to be any articulation here at the bottoms of the legs. They're just more a continuation. Just, I guess if anything, you could rotate this. Maybe there is a slight swivel in the lower boots. Really, really cool looking boots on this guy. There's Fugitoid. Nice looking figure. I don't think it's even the case either that you have to be collecting or even be aware of the original Mirage Run comics. In fact, you can either just display these, just you can really display Fugitoid also with your cartoon turtles. But for the sake of this and wanting to be, of course, a purist to the original comic run of the turtles, I did definitely want to bring in some of those original Mirage comic uh, turtles. And here, just again, is, eh, you know what, we'll bring them all back in. But Donatello certainly served most of the review by being assisting especially with the gravity equalizer but yeah just bring in the other turtles just to bring them back in one of these days i really should have a look at these in their separate review let me know if you guys would be interested certainly to see that but yeah whether you do have the original mirage run turtle figures or you just have the cartoon turtles i think fugitoy blends well in with either one of those lines uh certainly as well i think at one point i had even the original playmates fugitoy but that's long since been sold I really am happy, first of all, that we got a Fugitoid, and I'm especially happy that we got one that was tied more to the Mirage Run stuff, because with all the love that that NECA is doing with the turtle stuff from the cartoons, it's nice every once in a while that they show a little bit of love to some of the rest of the turtle fandom out there. I am all for more love for Mirage, and I don't even mean either the Transformer, the Autobot, nor the candy bar that used to be on the store shelves. Whatever happened to Mirage candy bars? They were similar to arrows, and instead they were a little bit thicker. They were, from what I remember, triangular, almost like a Toblerone bar. I'm veering way off course here. To stay back on course, what I mean, though, is the original Mirage comics, of which Fugitoid is based on. Now, Fugitoid also appeared in the cartoon, but this is not the Fugitoid from the cartoon. He was a little bit more, well, obviously cartoonier. But this predates before the days when the Turtle Brothers were animated. This was when they were just relegated to the pages of the comics. In fact, you probably could flip through those pages if you have those original Mirage comics of the TMNT. Probably not do that, I think, in the original comics. If you have reprints, all the better. But if you flip through those pages, you may be able to pinpoint many of the accessories that come packaged along with Fugitoid. Many of the Blazer Blasters, not only that, but the Triceraton Blaster, the Restraining Cuff, and even what I have displayed with him right now, the Gravity Equalizer. 
I think that's super cool that he comes included with the gravity equalizer. Not necessarily something I would display with Fugitoid, but I think going back to those original turtle figures that we got before from NECA, the ones inspired by the Mirage run, I'm definitely going to be displaying, I think, the gravity equalizer on Donatello's arm. As you can see, it did fit not only his arm, but all those original turtles can also use the restraining cuffs. Although, in the, I think in the comics, they would have been behind their back, but you can at least remove, yes, the hands on both the sides of their forearms, easily slide their forearms into the restraining cuff. How cool is that? Now, of course, this one is based on the comics, the Mirage comics. Maybe at some point we are going to be getting ourselves the Fugitoid from the cartoon. I would imagine there would be some substantial retooling. Probably would have to do a figure from scratch, but maybe you never know. We may get ourselves at some point a cartoon Fugitoid. Let's hope that happens. But to go back to the original Mirage comics, I hope at some point we are going to be getting those original... They probably would have to re redesign the molds, I think, a little bit. But I hope at some point the NECA toys could consider re-releasing those Mirage Turtles. I'm happy enough that I have a set, but there's many collectors out there that never got the chance to get those Mirage comic Turtles. And now the prices of what they're going for, that's a spicy meatball. Seriously, though, nobody remembers what Mirage, Mirage candy bars, they had all, you bit into it. It was nothing but hollow bubbled air. It was like a, it was like an arrow. Somebody doesn't even know an arrow. Anyways, Mirage were delicious. Anyways, I'd like to thank the folks over at NECA Toys that did provide this sample of Mirage Fugitoid. And we can have a look at this review. What do you guys think of the figure? Let me know down below in the comments section. This was also tied into the Holothon. Something I didn't mention in this review, but I'll mention it right now. Tied into the Holothon, so you could either have gotten this guy online, or here in Canada, many of these figures have now started to surface in Toys R Us. Nowhere near the vicinity of where a Mirage would have been. I gotta know if Mirage still exists. At any rate, though, a big thank you to the folks over at NECA Toys that did provide this sample of Fugitoid. What do you think of the figure? Let me know down below in the comments section. And maybe for your video question for today, going way off course, what's your favorite candy bar? Let me know. Coffee Crisp for me, followed then probably to a Kit Kat. I love Kit Kat Chunkies. They're absolutely delicious. Make sure if you are new to this channel, you're enjoying the content that you're seeing. And also enjoy the sprinkled ramblings that we throw in there from time to time. If you are new here, yes, hit the subscribe. If you are new here, yes, turn on the bell notification. And if you are here, make sure you're coming back on a regular basis. Because while we have wrapped up the review for Holothon Fugitoid, slipping that in there now. There's definitely going to be a lot more neck reviews lined up and coming your way. As always, thanks for watching. See you guys next time.